Okay, so we're going to talk about limiting reactants today. Um, let's first define what a limiting reactant is. Not very often are you going to have the perfect amount of all your reactants in order to uh, use everything up when you're running a chemical reaction. So whatever it is that you run out of first, whichever reactant you run out of first, that is what we call the limiting reactant, which means it limits the, how much product you can make. So moving on to the real simple cake example. If we have a recipe that calls for three eggs, two cups of flour, and four cups of sugar, and we want to make as many cakes as possible um, with the ingredients that we have in our pantry. So let me get my pen here. In our pantry we have 12 eggs and 12 cups of flour. Let's write that a little better. And 12 cups of sugar. Well, based on what my recipe says, if I'm just focused on the eggs, how many cakes could I make? 12 divided by 3, it's easy enough. I could make 4 cakes. If all I had to worry about was my flour, I would be able to make six, and if I'm only looking at the sugar, I would be able to make three cakes. So we're going to run out of one of these ingredients. Which one are we going to run out of first? Well, we can only make a maximum of three cakes because of our sugar, so therefore sugar is what we would call the limiting reactant. Let's do another one. All right, so we have 17 eggs this time, 9 cups of flour, and 22 cups of sugar. So again, looking at my recipe, um, if I was only worried about my eggs, I would be able to make just a little over 5.5, so about 5.7 cakes, um, using my eggs all up, and be able to make 4.5 cakes with my flour, and five and a half cakes with 22 cups of sugar. So the most amount of cakes I can make is this four and a half guy, which means flour is my limiting reactant here. One more, just to make sure we all understand. So if we have nine eggs this time, 10 cups of flour and 18 cups of sugar, Looking at just the eggs, recipe calls for three, so I could make a total of three cakes. Looking at just the flour, be able to make five cakes, and just the sugar, I could make four and a half. The most I can make with, before I run out of something is going to be three cakes, and eggs here are my limiting reactants. All right, so moving on to the next slide, let's actually apply it to some real chemical equations and we will write in blue. So example one says identify the limiting reactant when 28 grams of nitrogen reacts with 25 grams of hydrogen to produce ammonia. So our equation we have nitrogen reacting with hydrogen and I'm gonna go ahead and write this balanced gives us ammonia. And our question says that we are starting with 28 grams of nitrogen and we're mixing it with 25 grams of hydrogen. So the way you approach these problems, I need to know based on my reactants or my ingredients how much product I can make if I am only considering one of the reactants, which means I need to figure out how much I can make with 25 grams of hydrogen and how much I would be able to make with 28 grams of nitrogen, and then I have to compare those two numbers. So it really doesn't matter at this point if you convert these grams to moles of ammonia or grams of ammonia, either one, as long as you're consistent. I'm gonna go ahead and go the full gamut and go all the way to grams just because those are the hardest ones you'll ever see, so let's just dive in. So if we are looking just at nitrogen and ignoring this hydrogen for now, 
how much ammonia can we produce if we have 28 grams of nitrogen? Well, that would be a gram to gram question, which requires four steps. So we're starting with 28 grams of nitrogen and we need to get it down here into some number of grams of ammonia and some of you have started to kind of pick up on this pattern that works across the top here and of course we move everything down diagonally to kind of guide where our numbers are going to go and what our numbers are going to be and to kind of squeeze in there the three all right so in the molar mass section there's always going to be a one with the moles Molar mass of nitrogen is 28.014. Molar mass of ammonia is 17.031. And the mole ratio between ammonia and nitrogen is a 2 over 1 ratio. So once we process all these calculations, we are going to come out to see that we have been able to produce 34.04 grams of ammonia. All right, well that's not the full picture. So we need to know now if we ignore just, let's see if I can, if maybe we ignore the nitrogen, how much ammonia can we make with the hydrogen? And then we have to compare those two numbers. So we have to do another gram to gram this time starting with 25 grams of hydrogen. So here we go, molar mass of hydrogen is 2.016. The reason it's H2 is because of the uh, seventh heaven, the diatomic rules. And then we are looking at our mole ratio between ammonia and hydrogen this time. And from the balanced equation, that is a 2 over 3 ratio. And now the molar mass of ammonia has not changed from the previous problem, so it's still 17.031 grams. And if we run these calculations, we see that given 25 grams of hydrogen, we could produce 140.8 grams of ammonia. So what is the most amount we can make? Well, it's going to be the smallest number. So 34.04 grams of ammonia is the smallest number, the smallest amount of ammonia we could produce. But the question, if you read it, it says identify the limiting reactant. So what was the limiting reactant? What limits the amount of product we can produce? And in this case, that is nitrogen. Nitrogen limits this equation. Once we make 34.04 grams of ammonia, we are out of nitrogen and we cannot make any more. Okay, let's try another one. So next question says, identify the limiting reactant in the double replacement reaction between silver nitrate and sodium phosphate when 200 grams of re each reactant is used. So let's go ahead and write out our equation, and I'll write it balanced for you. AgNO3 reacts with Na3PO4 yielding... Ag3PO4 and 3 sodium nitrates. Alright, so we are given 200 grams of each of our reactants. And uh, we need to know which one of these is the limiting reactant. Well, unlike the first question, we see now that we have two products. It does not matter which product you pick um, as long as you're consistent. So just for the sake of 
this is what I want to do, I suppose. I'm going to convert both of these into this first product, silver phosphate. All right. <clears throat> so this is going to be two gram to gram questions. And we'll just start with the silver nitrate guy. So we have 200 grams of silver nitrate. And we need to know how much silver phosphate we can make with uh, 200 grams of silver nitrate. So the molar mass of silver nitrate, I calculated it to be one mole of silver nitrate has a mass of 169.872 grams. And then we're into our mole ratio section. And our mole ratio here looks like it's a three moles of silver nitrate for every one mole of silver phosphate, G3PO4. And then lastly, we need the, mol uh, the molar mass of silver phosphate, which is 418.574 grams uh, over one mole. squeeze that in there. Oh, there should be a four down there. Okay, and a three. So when we run all those numbers, we should come up with something like 164.27 grams of silver phosphate. That's the amount of silver phosphate we can make uh, given 200 grams of silver nitrate. So now we need to look at the sodium phosphate. Let's scoot up a little bit here. So what if we have 200 grams of sodium phosphate? How much silver phosphate can we produce? Well, one mole of sodium phosphate has a molar mass of 163.967. And then our mole ratio in this case looks like it's a one to one. And then lastly, we need to use our molar mass of silver phosphate, which is still 418.574 for every one mole of it. Sorry guys, I'm trying to squeeze everything in there. Alright, so when we do the math here, it looks like we come up with about 510.56 grams of silver phosphate. So which one is the limiting reactant? Which one, um, what's the most silver phosphate we can make? Well, that's going to be, again, the smallest number. That is the most amount of silver phosphate we can produce, which means that the silver nitrate guy is the limiting reactant. Once we use up those 200 grams of silver nitrate, that is the most we can make. So we're going to stop here for now, and we're going to continue on with a second video.